prison awaiting everybody. When you're sowing seed into God and that due season is full of a life of answered prayer and petitions granted. Due season is a time where the Lord unveils the life that he created you to live, the things he created you to have, the possessions he created you to enjoy. Due season is a time where the Father gives unto you your heart's desires because you gave him your, his heart's desires when he desired you to sow seed and you did it. He desired you to fulfill an instruction and you did it. He wanted you to get away from somebody, you let it happen. He wanted you to disconnect, you let it happen. You made decisions to please his heart. Now he has a life to please your heart. There are pleasures forevermore that God has reserved for you specifically according to what type of person you are. Everybody has different pleasures and they have different desires. But he gives you the desire of your heart in due season. Due season is not when you pass from your body and you enter into eternity. Due season is scheduled for your earthly life while your intangible flesh, where you could feel it in your physical body, where you could experience it, taste it, and see that the Lord is good in your physical body. The enemy didn't want anybody to enter into this place. So er, from the day that you're born, if the enemy got to get you to grow up in a family that's religious, get you to grow up in a family that's having a form of godliness, they're self-righteous, or they're atheists, whatever it is, from the day that you enter into the earth, even before you come to the earth, Satan is always attempting to devise Things that will keep you blind so that you won't receive this life. Because when somebody enters into the hundredfold return, that means Satan has to pay up. The Bible talks about it in Proverbs, I think that's Proverbs chapter 6, how there, there's a sevenfold return if you catch the thief. And then the thief got to pay you all the substance of the thief house. Now, what is the house of the thief? It's the kingdom of Satan. It's the kingdom of darkness. And how had the kingdom of darkness, they have accumulated wealth through sinners, through people that don't love God. So they have become billionaires. People that don't have the Holy Ghost have become billionaires and trillionaires. And they're, they're having millions of dollars because the sons of God haven't fully tapped into the Holy Ghost power and what he could do in finances. But the real wealth and the real jackpot is in the Holy Spirit of God. He is a businessman on earth. The Holy Ghost is a businessman on earth. And he has a trading system. It's called seed. It's called time. And it's called harvest. And when somebody gets to the harvest, is it, it is an achievement for walking in self-denial. When someone gets to the harvest, that means that they decided to praise the Lord, not persecute the Lord. They decided to give God thanks, not give him grief. The Bible said grieve not the Holy Spirit. That means that the Holy Spirit experiences you in a good way or a bad way. This is the reality of the gospel. Oftentimes you hear people, you know, Jesus did it all. There's no, God is pleased with me. He's happy with me. People are going to believe that until their day in hell. Because if you understand that the Holy Spirit is experiencing who you are, if you do evil, he gets grieved by you. If you do what he says, he gets pleased by you. The Holy Spirit is a feeler. He feels appreciated and he feels rejected. He feels loved, he feels hated. He feels combat, he feels submission. He feels honor, he feels disrespect. He feels attentiveness, he feels waywardness, distraction. The Holy Spirit is the receiver of your seed sown. He is a multiplying agent. The Holy Spirit is on earth to take a sower into everything 
that will abound in the blessing. Remember Proverbs 28, 20? The faithful man shall abound with the blessing. The man that's full of faith, that means he's full of pleasure for the Lord. That means that he's full of ideas and intentions to do what the kingdom of God is requiring him to do. He is hungry and thirsty for righteousness, and this man shall abound with blessings. It is by the power of the Holy Ghost that wealth enters into your life. Money cometh not to those that got financial struggles. Money cometh to those that have taken away the struggle that God has had with the soul of man to get them to honor him. Money cometh, doesn't, uh, money cometh not to the person that has financial struggles, but the person that has taken away God's struggle with man to get them to sow into him. The, the, the money cometh anointing, the financial anointing is poured out on the person that is taking away God's bad experiences with man. They're creating an experience with God where he could see that they are in his image and likeness to so to honor and to truly worship him. There's a payday for the sower. When you are sower, God will give you nice clothes. When you are sower, God will give you name brand clothes. When you are so a God will give you nice watches, nice jewelry. When you are so a God will give you nice shoes. When you are so a God will bless you with your heart's desire and he'll give it to you in abundance because he wants to reward those that are seeking him. They're sowing into him. You seek God with a seed. You can't seek God without sowing. What you think that all you can offer to God is your mouth? You got stuff on this earth that you could give. You honor God with your substance, not just with your mouth. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 and on is telling you that if you honor the Lord with your finances, he going to give you plenty. He going to give you overflow. This is a built and finalized foundation of the economy of God. He makes it happen from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob to you. And everybody became very rich. Everybody became very wealthy because they built an altar unto God and they gave him the best. And they received the best in return. They experienced the best in return. They, they, they begin to uh, expand and prosper. The Bible said in Genesis 26, that Isaac began to prosper so big that the people was embarrassed because they was enemies of God. And they didn't want to see his prosperity. All of them was in a famine. So where did he get his materials? It was supernatural material. Where did he get his money? It was supernatural money. It, where did he get his stock? It was supernatural stock. Where did he get his provision? Supernatural provision. A famine means that there is a shortage, a lack of necessities. Everybody's struggling, but because he decided to sow, there's an open heaven over his life. We see that the life of Job, that sowing, it builds an invisible hedge around you, that when Satan is devising things to hurt you and affect you, God has built an invisible fence, a security guard, a security guard, a glory at your rear end, a glory in front of you, a glory at your peripheral, everywhere is a glory surrounding you that the enemy can't succeed in touching you. Sowing. It is an encounter, a prophetic encounter that God experiences with those that have made it their objective to love him back. Everybody receives the love of God, even the atheists, because they're still alive. They're still breathing in God's oxygen to say that God doesn't exist. Imagine that. <laughs> even the blasphemer is still alive blaspheming. Imagine that. The sower has decided to love God back and God has listed all type of things to show honor to the sower in your transportation, in your bodily health. God will honor the sower in your health. He'll take away all your diseases, 
all of your sicknesses, all of your sexual diseases. He'll take away AIDS, HIV. He'll take away gonorrhea. He'll take away your herpes. He'll take away all your STDs in your body. He'll take it away from you when you're honoring him because he'll honor you back with something that you desire. Sowing brings you into a, a, a world of God repairing you. Whatever has been damaged, whatever has been destructed, whatever has death in it, that's where the revival comes. That's where the resurrection comes. When you're sowing, you open up yourself for God to release heaven on earth for you and to take away all the gates of hell and what they planned against you. You need the Lord's intervention in this life because man is always going to be evil. You're always going to be around evil man. They're always going to be doing evil things. You're going to need the Holy Spirit. And see, why I sow seed today, why I sow seed at this point in my life, I sow because my faith does not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. And I plug into the power of God. That's why I'm so great. That's why I'm so mighty mentally. My brain has fabulous thoughts. I have fabulous revelation. I can hear both God and angels. Whichever way the Father chooses to speak to me, I can see. But all these things, I respond to it with honor. A lot of times God will give a man or a woman gifts and abilities, but they don't honor him back. So they become workers of iniquity because they're not plugging in and giving the proper reaction to the goodness of God. When God has been good to you, there should be a volcano of thoughts inside of you, erupting inside of you, saying, I want to sow into God. I want to give him a thousand dollar seed. I want to give him a lot of money. I want to bless him. I want to build an altar that's memorable to God where he could take my seed and multiply it. And he could have an experience with my creative love, my creative honor, and he could restore my life back to the way it was supposed to be before sin. Before wrong decisions, before addiction, 